you know, it's uh, this time of year is a lot of learning, a lot of teaching, a lot of acclimating. And, um, you know, you, you're trying to position yourself the best in the best possible light to have a to have a good year to to be um, you know relevant in the in that large conversation. I, I believe that Alaska's going to win a lot of hockey games this year. They're going to beat some teams that uh, if we can continue to grow, continue to get better, will you know will help us down the road. I, I don't uh, you know I don't think that uh, I, I think that Alaska's going to be a very good team. Um, we saw how they compete in this skate and. Uh, they're going to be a very good team. Yeah, that's that's the encouraging thing is is we have an idea what we're capable of now within style of play. I do think that um, you know, given the offensive chances, that we have guys that will score goals. It's a matter of creating those chances, and you know, we're fortunate we scored four goals in the weekend and got two wins. You know, fortunate that we only gave up two on the weekend, one each night. So um, we you know we'll we'll work hard to try to get the offensive side of it improved. Well continuing to develop our defensive side and try to look for that goal differential margin that'll ensure success uh, you know on most given nights well he's an elite passer um, you know and, and and when he's playing with Gordo he's got an elite finisher with him so um, you combine that well, well I guess he's not playing with Gordo you know you got him with uh, with Evan Jansen who's a, a, a Elias Jansen who's a very good finisher so um, there's there's components within the line that that work really well we're still trying to find combinations that that do the job you know you got speed on the outside with Baker playing on that line right now and and a pretty good compete level they got a you know they've, they've scored some some good goals for us Baker's been involved in some offense for us in the early going as well so he's an elite passer um, guys like playing with him he's acclimating to a new position to center ice um, so there's a bit of an adjustment for that but it, he seems to be he seems to be doing very well at it yeah, I like I like how all the guys are are finding their way. Uh, you know, if there's anything, you know, you're not you're not really gonna, you know, with with new players, they get a little bit of a grace. Um, where where we're looking at is uh, where we judge kind of the whole, uh, you know, situation right now is on the growth of our returning players. Are they really ready to step? Can they make the strides and make the gains that'll help them? You know be the player that they want to be um, or in some ways have they reached their their limit of what they can offer um, and then and then we have a good idea of what that is so we're looking for you know some guys get a little bit of increased ice time to see if they can grow uh, veteran wise and then uh, because they, they should look better right now than the new players because of their understanding some of them have been here you know three four years this is their fourth year so um, I learned that long ago from my, my first college coach, Bill Selman. He was, you know, he was very lenient on on the uh, underclassmen, and thank goodness at that time I was an underclass, like I was a freshman. So he was lenient on the freshmen, but he but he was he held high uh, standards for the veteran players who have been through it. And I always I always felt that that was a admirable quality because you know right now guys are just new in just a couple of games they've played within our within our our systems and our style of play so we're looking for those young players that are acclimating and we're seeing that and then we're really looking can any of the older players um, the veterans step up and 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 take advantage of you know the departure of players that were above them and 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 uh, move in and and take some of that. So in the Saturday game, that's really what I was looking at is is how did those older players play in that game because that gives us a little bit of a basis going forward. Uh, he's off the charts competitive, you know, in, in every drill all the time. You know, he, he, embl he emblemates what, uh, what you would like your players to understand is, is um, you know, the protocol for how – for how you improve as a hockey player and how you get the most out of your ability, his, you know, if there's if, if there's if he's involved in a in a mistake uh, where you think it's a mistake, oftentimes it's it's not. It's uh, wow, well, I see what he was doing there on that play. It's it's a higher level than than most. So he's very studious about the game. His compete level is off the charts, um, and he continues to grow and increase in value. He's really. I feel I feel he's a he's a 
a letter guy. I put him in the same realm as the guys that wear the letters for us. He probably should have a letter on him because he's, you know, he he does everything the way we want it done, and and uh, you can see that again in the way he plays, shot blocking. I mean, you know, everything he does, what he overcomes, um, tremendous, tremendous. I've I've utmost respect for for Casper. Yeah, I think it was hard for Max to stay motivated for for those years, and it probably especially last year where he thought. He thought it was going to be his opportunity to lose last year, and all of a sudden we find out late that Blake's returning, an All-American, first-team All-American, player of the year in our league. Um, you know, that has to be tough on ev on anybody. So I, it was probably a little bit hard for him to come and really grow and make the gains in a college environment with 34 games where, where Blake is getting virtually every start um, with a team that's, you know, battling to improve and starts out without winning a game in October and things like that. Um, this year, I think it started out a little bit that way. And then, then, you know, something kicked in with him and, um, you know, probably in about week two of our, of our skates where something kicked in and he, he really started fighting for the puck and paying attention to the details of his game. And, um, and you're seeing the growth in that, and hopefully he can parlay that um, along with competition it creates within our goaltending tandem. Derek's a quality goaltender as well. Um, Bryant is the the local young man is doing a great job and acclimating, and and uh, actually you can start seeing him getting a little swagger in his step as well. He's he's a pretty good athlete, so um, I think our goaltenders are having fun. Uh, you know, part of, I think, one of the things that helps our goaltenders overall is being a former goaltender myself, I know what drills absolutely are horrible drills for goaltenders and what drills can help them grow. And I think I have a tendency to stick with drills that get goal, improve goaltending as well as others, as, as well as the regular teams. So I think they benefit from those game-like situations a little bit as well. Yeah, we'll see a week from Friday. Um, there's things we certainly had to do. Um, we're going to put in a good hard week of practice this week that and we'll be able to get you know some extra time with that instead of backing off as the week goes on a little bit to, you know for for competitive purposes and things like that so we'll be able to push some guys through their limit and the, the hope is to give them a couple of days off on the weekend probably their last one till maybe Christmas where they can uh, you know where they can relax and and uh, come back and get out on Monday but but with a basis that we've created this week in some areas that I think we still need to grow um, and will constantly need to grow as the year goes on. So, I, you know, you always take, try to take advantage of these. Later in the year, it's all about rest and giving, making sure you're giving them time off recovery because the intellectual part of the game is, is a little bit um, more heightened, more, more entrenched. Uh, so right now our, our focus is to, is to learn. So whether we're playing or not playing, um, we're doing our best to take them take the make the most of the of you know the the schedule you know I like I like the growth he's getting uh he, yeah, poor kid he missed two tap-ins on on uh Saturday night he missed you know works he set him up perfectly on a two-on-one with about four four and a half minutes left with a four by six looking at him and he it went kind of off his heel looked like one of my golf shots and kind of hit the hosel and went went where you you know where you're hoping it doesn't go uh, and then he, with the goaltender out, he hit a goal post when he was looking at the net again, and he's and he's a pretty accurate shooter. So um, he was bit a little bit in that regards, but but I like how he's creating offense. He made a really good play on the first goal, um, you know, same side behind the net pass. He's doing a really good job for us on the forecheck. Uh, he's creating diversity within his game, which is really what I think some players who have struggled here in the past have not been able to do like when they when they're coming off of a really big year they've kind of been single dimensional and 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 you have to continue to find ways to especially at a you know at, at a 5'10 5'11 size there's players from all around the world at that size trying to get that same contract that a player like Gordo's trying to get so um, every every tool that they can use and every everything they can learn to to give themselves the best opportunity moving forward. But right now, our concern is to make us a better hockey team, make them a better hockey player. Um, that's what we're looking for, and he's really embracing those other parts of his game. Um, and that that's given him, I think it's 11 scoring chances, I think, on Friday night. Uh, he was involved, I believe, in 11, um, which is an insane number. I don't know what he got for points. I think he got at least one on Friday. So 
Uh, I'm not sure he scored yet, but he's got he's still got points on the board, and we know that he's going to score. So it was kind of like Brian Hallen, and he was a scorer that always had, you know, like 14, 16 goals and eight, 10 assists. That made him a 20 to 25 point, 26 point guy. Um, that we always said, if you can if you can get that secondary type of play where you're involved in in assists and, and creating goals besides just shots where somebody's getting a rebound, you're going to go to 40 points. Well, then he ended up going to like 46 points and, and sign an NHL contract. So um, that's kind of what, what we're looking at out of, out of uh, Gordo as being that player who can do things in a lot of different ways. And if his, if his goal, if he can get a third more assists than goals, then he's looking at 35 points because we know he's going to get his goals. Yeah, it's it was good. Our work ethic was good yesterday. There, there. Uh, I think we realized that that we left some some game on the table on on Saturday night. I thought our work ethic was really good in the game. And obviously, if they're not getting second scoring opportunities and a lot of odd man rushes and things like that, um, they were just they were just a little bit more. I th I felt in in tune um, with their game and a little bit more focused and and. Um, and, and, and but we were still able to get the the two points uh, with that. So I thought our compete level was very good. I thought that our our mental approach to the game dropped off from where we grew the night before, and I attribute that to I'm going to take responsibility for that on the conditioning side of it, and we're rectifying that, starting to rectify that this week. That I think the first thing that, that goes when you're tired and fatigued is your the mental side of it. You know, you start you start seeing. A little bit of drifting, a little bit coasting. The, the mind, you know, kind of plays tricks on you and and gets you out of out of uh, you know the focus, the mental focus and acuity that you want to have. So um, we're working on that this week. But being two and zero, oh, like I said, I think Alaska is going to win a lot of hockey games if we can continue to have success and do our job and and win hockey games. These non-conference games pay play huge pay huge dividends down the road potentially, as we've seen in the past where we've had really good non-conference records, and that's put us in the hunt and got us in, in the uh, you know in the um, pairwise portion of the of the quadrant, you know the automatic qualifier, and, and so any way you can get in the national tournament, you're trying to get in that because the ultimate goal is to perform at that time and to be able to to win national titles is what we're all seeking. So um, two zero right now non-conference with another big non-conference series coming up, and then. A big GLI non-conference set, followed by the Coachella tournament, where we get to play Lowell, who's a hockey East uh, foe that's that's playing good hockey right now. Um, everything's still looking on the upside for us. We haven't wasted, we haven't uh, we haven't bit ourselves in the foot or, or killed opportunity. Yeah, there's a big improvement from from that on Friday, and we grew as the game went on Friday, uh, and Saturday structurally we were decent. Um, for the most part, although I thought I didn't think we played above the puck enough, we didn't, you know. But we got there, we got there, but didn't get all the way there. Like we got equal with guys and didn't get all the way. And, and their goal was a, was emblematic of that, where they, I mean, the coverage was there, and they just put a puck on net and went right past the two defensemen who were defending them. We were there, we didn't do our job, and that's mental. And again, we'll we'll. You know, let's let's find out what part of that is was fatigue, and let's find out what part of that was commitment, and then we'll make you know we can use that going forward in our decisions we make as far as how the team plays. Because if they know it, and they aren't doing it, let's find the reason for that. And if the reason is is a, a lack of commitment, then we know that. And if if the reason is was fatigue in some ways, you know we'll know that and we can resolve that. Yeah. <laughs>